pain go away and never come back any other day. Deal, right? Well, it'd be nice if it was that simple in the world of sickle cell. However, there are things you can do to help not escalate your pain and to avoid some common triggers. So um, oftentimes, you don't exactly know what triggers a uh, pain episode or those um, blockages in your blood vessels in the world of sickle cell, but there are some recommendations that both doctors and fellow people living with sickle cell have come up with to help people stay healthy and avoid those um, pain crises that are due to things that you do have control over. So the number one thing that you uh, really have a lot of control over is the amount of water you drink and in a person living with sickle cell They actually need quite a bit more. So the recommendation is eight servings eight servings of 12 ounce glasses of water So that actually equals 96 ounces of water a day minimum Versus for you and I we only need about 64 ounces a day. So that's um, four extra cups of water a day uh, just to scratch the surface. Now, if it's hot outside or if you're doing any kind of uh, physical labor, then you'd obviously want to increase that. So dehydration can be a trigger, a very common trigger in, um, in a pain crisis. So making sure that you stay hydrated is um, one of the easiest ways to avoid that type of pain crisis that um, is environmental. Uh, also, the the temperature. So being in extreme heat, which can cause um, that dehydration, and also being in extreme cold. So um, up in Colorado, it gets very, very cold. And um, the doctors actually recommend that Sophia doesn't go out below uh, around 35 degrees um, because it's just too cold and that uh, restricts her uh, blood vessels, making them smaller, which then uh, increases the likelihood of having those blockages with the sickle cells. Now, obviously, if you live in somewhere like Michigan, where we do have some uh, fellow warriors up there, 35 is nothing, and your body would be used to that, and so the temperature might be a bit lower. Whereas if you're in a hot place like Phoenix, the temperature restrictions might be a little bit different because you're used to really hot weather. Uh, the next thing that you do have control over is altitude. So the higher up you go in elevation, the less oxygen you have uh, available to you to breathe. And so um, people frequently talk about in the news about um, people coming up to Denver and having a pain crisis. This is absolutely uh, a possibility if you are a person that is not uh, from this altitude and if you did not transition up here. So there are ways to transition up here using oxygen to get your body used to that altitude to avoid altitude sickness and to decrease um, the likelihood of having a pain episode. But overall, avoiding those altitudes and certain altitudes above 8,000 feet are typically completely off limits because they do uh, exponentially increase the rate of having a um, pain crises in your brain, which actually would be a stroke, sickling in the blood vessels heading up to your brain or inside your brain is actually a type of stroke. So avoiding high elevations um, and preparing if you're going to go up in elevation is one of the things you can do in that trigger situation. Um, unfortunately, especially as we get older, stress is a very common trigger reported by um, teenagers and adults and trying to keep your stress level down and have something in place. Like we talked about some alternative forms to deal with the pain, but also having some plan in place to deal with the stress can also uh, help you try to avoid that trigger. All of us do get stressed, whether it's excited stress, like the night before your wedding or panicky stress because you don't have enough money to pay your bills. Any type of stress like that in abundance can be a trigger for a pain episode. In uh, women, menstruation is actually frequently reported as a trigger for pain. And knowing this ahead of time and having a conversation with your doctor about uh, regulating your cycle if it's very heavy or about doing some uh, low-level pain management at home kind of in preparation are some things that uh, female females living with sickle cell um, are able to do once they begin menstruating to try to get this trigger under control, if possible. Remember, all of these sometimes will just happen, regardless of if you try to uh, control it or not, because sickle cell 
can kind of take over uh, your body, even if you try to keep yourself healthy and stress-free and at sea level, drinking lots of water, sometimes you'll get that pain crisis for no reason at all. And nobody really knows exactly why. Um, there's a couple of other ones. Uh, one obvious one would be um, alcohol, drug, and tobacco use. So any of those things um, can trigger a pain episode. And especially with alcohol, it's more around the dehydration factor because if you uh, drink excessively, it can cause dehydration, which we talked about with um, the water. Dehydration uh, decreases the volume of blood you have, which makes it thicker. And so the thicker it gets, it's already having a harder time moving through your blood vessels, add some sickle cells to that, and you've got yourself a blockage. Um, smoking decreases the amount of oxygen you have in your blood to begin with, and it's already decreased because of the sickle cell. And drug abuse um, is just for anybody, for all of us, any kind of illicit drugs um, will damage your system. And the last one is frequently when you have an infection, it can lead to a pain crisis. So being aware that um, if you have an infection, most often you are in the hospital, but frequently people report that when they are in the hospital for a blood infection, they also experience a pain crisis based on all the things that are already happening in their blood. So this is just an overview of um, some of the common triggers and what, if anything, you can do to prevent them. If there's other things that trigger a pain crisis for you, please feel free to leave them below or tag us back with a video. Check us out on the web at hopeforscd.org. Um, sign up for our newsletter. It's just a quick email and we send it out quarterly with other fun facts and videos and info. And well, stay tuned. Thanks.